heathens, I'm Happy Viking, and I'm here to make you awesome, one frothy pint of metal at a time. So drink up. My show is many things to many people. A comedy review show, a musical green light, a shallow power fantasy for the white hetero cis male patriarchy, and it is indeed all of these things. But mostly, I believe it's educational. And with that in mind, I would like to speak a little about multiculturalism and... Hey, where are you going? No, don't you dare touch that! Multiculturalism? Man, that shit is whack. Man, I ain't got time for this shit. I got white hetero male stuff to do. Ha! There is no escape from Viking. As I was just about to say, multiculturalism is a beautiful thing. Being able to share in the stories, values, and traditions of an entire people is a wonderful experience. And there is so much wonder in the world, and you owe it to yourself to absorb as much of it as possible. So, with that in mind, let's segue into one of the most culturally diverse places on the planet, South America. South America's pretty sweet. It's got beautiful people, it's got badass wildlife, and it's always been an enthusiastic supporter of metal bands. Wonder why that is? I theorize it's largely because of, shall we say, philosophical resonance. Because Latin cultures emphasize machismo, open sexuality, and audacious colorful celebrations thereof. And metalheads are all about that. Metal's like a never-ending carnival if it was mixed with Woodstock and Thunderdome. Okay, I know I'm generalizing a bit, but hey, making broad declarative statements is what all Vikings do. Still, the point is, South America loves metal, and they have a strong tradition of pumping out quality acts, such as Angra, Sepultura, and Soulfly. And that tradition continues today with a lean, mean metal machine maintained by a team of primo Latinos, carrying the torch and illuminating their humble listeners on the richness of their heritage. So open your minds, open your hearts, and open your legs for the sensual and sophisticated stylings of Tierra Mystica. Tierra Mystica is a colorful cultural kaleidoscope of dope and delightful folk metal melodies mixed with power metal potency that hails from Porto Alegre in the south of Brazil. And this band is all about the Andes mountain men, all of the fantastic folklore and fabled epics of the Quechuas, Quichuas, Urus, and Aymaras are represented in the music of Tierra Mystica. And even if that's not your area of expertise, I'm thinking you rinky-dink little stinks will still be tickled pink by these Incan invokers. You'll be clinking your drinks in synchronized celebration to their sun god salutations. They got songs that soar like the condor, taking you high in the sky as you fly through the optimistic histories and jolly mythologies these fine and dandy Andean ass beaters have vividly recreated through soulful singing, righteous riffing, and rootin' tootin' pan flute. Oh yes, Tierra Mystica makes music for the worldly cosmopolitan gentleman. But don't worry, you can enjoy it too. So come with me, my friends, and let's unravel some mysteries and answer some questions about our Quechua conquistadors. Finding information on this band was a substantial pain in the ass because all of their interviews are in Portuguese. And I don't speak Portuguese. I only speak English, Danish, Old Norse, Hindi, Sindarin, Esperanto, and the universal language of lovemaking. So instead of translating the interviews like a responsible person, I'm just gonna copy everything from Wikipedia like a college freshman because whatever, man, I got toga parties to go to and shit to destroy. Anyway, this group of grand and glorious gauchos was formed in 2008 by Fabiano Muller and Ricardo Duran after they split off from their former band, Tocata Magna. These two wanted to fuse the fiery fury of metal with the brisk and breezy beauty of Andean music, and their bandmates just weren't into it. So they left, and they made a new band with new bros called Tierra Mystica. And immediately, they caught fire. 
Their first demo, New Eldorado, sold 100,000 copies. Holy shit! And then, of course, they took all that, beefed it up, and turned it into a sick debut album called A New Horizon Comes. And then, if they were merely on fire before, they went straight up supernova with this sucker. They started opening for bands like Angra, Epica, Symphony X, Scorpions, and fucking Sepultura. And then, just a month ago, back in July, they released a second solar-powered product, appropriately titled Heirs of the Sun. wasn't obvious enough already, the blessing of the sun god is truly upon these guys, just beaming down in luminous waves, granting them victory, vitamin D, and trace amounts of skin cancer. But mostly the first two, because they're so good! The matter of actually addressing the group's quality has become tedious and redundant, seeing as how self-evident their wicked badassitude is. You don't open for bands like Symphony X by being chumps, after all. You do it by having sick riffs, fat flute melodies, and dope-ass singing. Hell, especially dope singing. The singer for Tierra Mystica is so good that he's actually drawn comparisons to former Camelot crooner Roy Kahn. Nope. I am not doing that joke. I hold myself to a higher standard than that. No, I don't. But yes, Roy Kahn, and as far as comparisons go, that's a really good one, because Roy Kahn has a power that my people call the thum, which translated into English means sex voice. Chase the heathen call, we blow, you and I. Oh, mercy Roy, you've given me the vapors. And I believe that, across oceans and mountains, the sacred gift of the sex voice has been passed on from Roy to Guy Antonioli. Can you hear it? I think you can. I'm pregnant now. And yes, I don't know how that's even possible. I mean, come on. I had my tubes tied years ago. But regardless, it's clear that Guy has a remarkably awesome voice, and it goes along swimmingly with the charangos and zamponias and all the other instruments I'm surely pronouncing wrong. Still, it's just perfectly harmonious. Speaking of harmonious, if there was any word in the English language that I would use to describe Tierra Mystica, it'd be boner. But since this is a family show, roll with it. Let's say it's harmonious. Harmony is Tierra Mystica's greatest strength, and I mean that in a very broad sense. Musically and interpersonally, all of these guys are sick hyped to be making this kind of music, and it comes through. You can feel the sheer amount of passion for the past in the music. In general, though, Tierra Mystica just inspires good feelings all around, whether it be childlike awe, spiritual wanderlust, or just your run-of-the-mill sexual arousal, Tierra Mystica can make it manifest like the best of the best. You gotta love that exotic flavor. You can almost dance to this music. But no moshing. That fucks with the groove. And if Disney has taught me anything, you should never fuck with an Incan man's groove. You threw off my groove! I'm sorry, but you've thrown off the Emperor's groove. Sorry! Fun fact, that movie provided 90% of my research material on Andean culture. I really have nothing bad to say about Tierra Mystica. 
Though, I am surprised that, despite opening for bands like fucking Sepultura, these guys are largely unknown outside of South America. I suppose that just makes it all the more important that we spread the word and support Andean music. Seriously, we have to support Andean music. It's the only thing protecting mankind from giant guinea pigs. Or, at least that's what South Park told me. But then, South Park's lied to me before. Danes aren't the Canadians of Europe, guys. We came first. It's more accurate to say Canadians are the Danes of North America. Except with more poutine and less rape. But anyway, whether or not the music of Tierra Mystica will save us from the looming furry menace, at least it sounds really darn good. Man of the earth, hell and heaven will be one with the sun. When the nerves are And sounds good, it does. That's really all there is to say on the matter. To summarize, Tierra Mystica is just plain radical, as I will now explain in lavish alliterative detail. They're a bunch of brilliant Brazilians, shaking and quaking the public pavilions, making and raking in billions in gold bullion and pink and purple simoleons. Our money sure is gay. Oh hush, purple is pimpin'. And if these fellows aren't making money right now, they really ought to be, because they're awesome. In fact, we should vow to give them some, to just bury these Brazil nuts in big league bank and cumulative currency, to just give Tierra Mystica so much money it makes Scrooge McDuck's treasure vault look like a kiddie pool. I think that's a pretty reasonable goal considering what Tierra Mystica is giving us. And what they're giving us is a uniquely euphonious Incan odyssey, a sonic sojourn into a fascinating culture filled with beauty, wonder, and a tiny dash of human sacrifice. These guys love this stuff, and they'll surely be burning bright for years to come. Well, at least until the Spanish show up. Ugh. But until then, let the tunes of Tierra Mystica take you high in the sky and whisk you far away. I'm Happy Viking, and you've just been served your recommended dosage of heavy metal. Rock on and drink responsibly. See, now that wasn't so bad now, was it? You learned something today, and now the internet hates you slightly less. It was gay and lame. Now let me out of here. I want to go proliferate my rape culture on Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, douchebag. You never learn. <laughs>